welcome to Financial Fix. I'm your host, Teresa McGarry, and we have with us today, Wilson Mason. Hey, Wilson, how you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? Pretty good. So, Wilson, tell me a little about yourself, only what you're comfortable sharing. Well, I'm 65 years old. I've had my share of ups and downs, ins and outs, and all around, but I'm still capable of learning. Uh, but the thing about me today is, I just said it just a minute ago, I'm going to say it now. It's about the principle, which is what's right. I'm not trying to do anything malicious, derogatory, or anything that's going to put me in harm's way or anybody else. But the truth is the truth. And if you just tell the truth all the time, you don't have to worry about telling nothing else. That's um, right. You don't have to remember what lie you told who and never. getting caught, covering your tracks, all that never. good stuff. Not at all. I've had my share of trouble, believe me. Um, it's been like ins and outs, ups and downs, but I've learned from it. I've learned a lot. I'm still alive. I have a lot to say and I have a lot to do. Uh, there are those that probably need to hear what I have to say more so than anybody else that I could, any, what anybody else says. Because like in order to be able to tell you what I'm gonna tell you, you have to live it. You'd have to go through it. Mm -hmm. I've been through a lot. I mean, I am. I was married uh, for twenty years. I screwed it up, and that's being that's being able to admit it and say it in front of thousands of people, whoever that you are, is <laughs> truth. It's truth because I did that. Um, they say it takes two, but at the same time, I provoked it, and so I just made it I, I took I tried to clean it up and I did but um, from it three children uh, retired from a job started an old business by myself uh, had some friends that had their business and went to work for them uh, in order to have a business you got to have money to make money from what they say you know and <laughs> I for one didn't have it but I had ideas uh, but I went to work with one of my best friends and he He's self-made, and he tried to help me be self-made. And this was back in ninety, the, early, the late nineties, early two thousands. So that's twenty some years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of detail within that. But I, I just don't, I don't think I have time to go into all of it. But what I'm going to tell you is I've learned a lot. Uh, you have to treat people how you want to be treated. That's how you get, that's how things get done. Uh, so I like the golden rule. It is the golden rule. That's exactly what it is. I'm glad you said that because that's what I say all the time. Um, my, my life is pretty good right now. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't have what the Smiths and the Joneses have per se, home, cars, boats, vacations and stuff like that. But what I got is I got peace of mind. I'm happy with what I'm happy with who I am because I know where I've been. I know where I want to go now. I know what I want to do. I think I'm into the help field. That's that's a lot, but you got to be careful who you help. That's right. It can get you in trouble. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, I, like I said, I've learned a lot, and I um I was lucky to meet Teresa. Really, I, it's, it's a strange, strange, phenomenal thing, but at the same time, uh, I'm a Christian and I don't teach, I don't preach God to anybody because you have to find him yourself. I can tell you about him, but until you absolutely know who he is and what he does, then you'll know exactly where I'm at because I played with him a lot, but, uh, he's, play with me and let me play, but he's always there. He's always showed up and picked me up and shook me out and said, come on, this time. It's a good thing he doesn't give up on us, huh? He never does. He yeah. never will. <laughs> he never will. He never gave up on me. Um, it's a good thing. Well, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. He's a, he's a way maker. Um, but 
you have to really, really, really submit. When I say submit, I mean commit. You got to commit to the commitment of what it takes to do what you're supposed to do. When you say commit to the commitment, there's a commitment that's got to be made, but you got to commit to make that commitment. That means all things in the past that you thought was good or that you wanted to bring with you, you just, just let it go. Just let it go because now the friends that I had before, there were associates, um, friends or somebody that uh, you, you just, you just, if you die with five friends in your life, you're lucky. If you die with that many, because I'm telling you what, uh, some people say you're friends, but if you go to jail and if you go to jail and you say, well, I got some friends, can you call them? <laughs> can they send you anything in the books? Can they, uh, can they take care of your business while you're still locked up? Will they do that? Well, nine times Most out of ten, no. nine times out of ten, no. Um, I had one and love him to death. But he he's a friend. Matter of fact, he'll tell you I'm his only friend. <laughs> he'll tell he'll tell you that. But uh, honestly, truly, you know, he's he's genuine. I've been knowing him since 1980, and that's when I first came to Kansas City after I graduated from college. Um, but those those are stories that are down the road, and I'll probably reveal some of that later on if if I go that far. But today. Um, Teresa is really a, she's a jewel. What she does is phenomenal because there needs to be more of her, more people like her. Uh, I hope to become one of her, not a woman, <laughs> not a woman, not a woman, please, not that. I'm not, not sure what one of her means, but uh, would you like to expand on that? Other than not I like one. to, I would like, I would like to be able to do what she does. Ah, I gotcha. Okay. I, would like, I would like to be able to do what she does on a level that tells that there is, there is help. There is somebody that cares. There is somebody that can help somebody get on their feet and make them learn that they can, they can learn to live a productive, a productive life, accountable life, and a self self-sufficient life to me that's living i was existing before i existed a long time i'm surprised that i'm still alive today i really really am by the roads that i was chose and where i've been you know you couldn't tell me that i'd be alive today but god's got a plan for me he let me meet this woman right here and um i mean I asked her this. I asked her this question. I said, "Is she is she my buddy?" <laughs> I asked her, if "She's my buddy," and she started. She started. She started thinking about it, and then she says, "Well," and I said, "Just say yes," <laughs> and she said, "Yes." I said, "That's good. That's mm -hmm. good." She's she's genuine. I don't. You don't meet too many genuine people in your life, and if you do, you better hang on to it because those are the people that are going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And that's where I. That's why I like her. Yeah, I'm with you with the wet noodle a few times. Oh, my goodness. Well, I tell you, I still got lashes on me. <laughs> <laughs> it was over the phone. Come I on. still got lashes on me. <laughs> Quick ones, too. I'm telling you. The round, hard noodles. I'm telling you. But they were I'm, wet noodles. They were soft. No. <laughs> I lucky. wasn't that mean. Yeah, she kept it real with me. Um, I'm, like I said, unfortunate. Uh, my life really and truly is turned has done a 360 or 180 or whatever you want to call it but there's been 180. A big, you know, 180 360 you don't want to go all the way around to back to where you started well you know what i could almost say that i did that when i when i first started this rap this this way of life but i just didn't do it the right way this first time and i did it and i completed it but i had to go back the second time just to get it all because like i did it for the wrong reason First time I did it for family, friends, foe, whatever, but uh, there was something missing. You. And so the next time I went back and did it, I did it for me. And when I did it for me, it's kind of like self, the gratification is great because like I know I earned it. I didn't have to have anybody give me anything because I worked for it. If you work for something, 
it's almost better than getting it from somebody that get that gives it to you. you oh, definitely. You have to work for it. You you feel you you feel like your your self worth goes up. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where I'm at today. I um, well, when you're doing something just to please everybody else, you don't really get much out of it. But when you don't care what everybody else thinks and you're trying to do it for yourself because you're trying to get yourself turned around or in a better place or learn what you need to learn or whatever the situation might be, that's a whole different ballgame. That's a whole different approach to whatever it is that is going on. And I mean, that could apply to lots of different situations. Sure. It, it, there's a lot. There's a lot of situations that, like you said, it applies to. Uh, personal situations, relationships, uh, work, uh, children, family, it goes hand in hand. Even your personal relationship you, with you, Jesus, yeah. same thing. If I'm doing, if all I'm doing is what the Sunday school teacher says to do and the pastor says to do and the songs say to do, and I'm not doing it to grow my personal relationship, it's, it's worlds apart. You're not doing it right. You're not doing it right. You're not going to get anything Absolutely. out. You're not going to get. I'm not going to say you're not going to get anything out of it, but you definitely won't get as much out of it as you would when you're truly trying to work on yourself and your personal yeah. relationship and not just make everybody else happy because you're checking off their checklist yeah. of things to do. Right. I, um, I agree. I agree with you 100%. Um, this, um, this episode in my life, that I'm, I call it that I'm going through, which the season's yeah. another thing I hear it called. Yeah. No, the season, season of my life. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not seasoning. I'm not putting you on a steak, okay? Yeah. I like steak. Anyway, we do. No, no, the big one, that is medium well. We um, digress. Anyway, yeah, in this season or episode. Yeah, but anyway, getting back <laughs> to it, you, um, Sometimes I lose train of thought when I'm talking to Teresa. Because <laughs> we're so much laughed about. She says she forgets some things too. But, oh, yeah. But it's, it's, it's honest. It's an honest thing. But we get back on track every once in a while because I, um, I, say, I tend to have a lot to say. Sometimes it goes like in circles, but at the same time, my point gets across. I don't like to hammer in. I don't like to hammer the point in because sometimes you have to just let it happen before they understand what it is I'm trying to tell them sometimes yeah i call that i i've had that with my kids sometimes and it's like tell one of them that's like okay, the other one they, you know she's she's just gonna have to learn the hard way because i've tried to tell her i've tried to explain it to her i've tried and she's just you know whether it's tilting the chair back on two legs She's going to have to fall over before it finally sinks in because she's not going to listen to mom or if it's, you know, this group of friends that's not, that's not headed in a good direction or, you know, a boyfriend that's like, uh, no, please don't. Or, you know, a, a class that it's like, I don't think that's a good class for you to take or whatever. Sometimes, and sometimes, hey, sometimes they prove me wrong and they step up to the plate and, and make it work. And other times it's like, you know, they hate to come back and say, you were right, mom. I told you so. It's like, yeah. no, I try never to say I told you so. But they do. I, but, you know, <laughs> you were right, mom. And it's like, you know, sometimes you just need to listen to those people who are not emotionally involved in the situation because they can see it differently than the person who's emotionally and physically in the middle of it. Um, and they can see concerns that you may be can't be you know understand very good point man um my mom my you mom. need to dismiss your phone okay like again <coughs> i was talking i was going to tell you something about my mom okay my mom uh, i'm the oldest i am the oldest in my family i'm the oldest nephew, the oldest cousin, the oldest. I was the firstborn in my family besides my mom and her brothers. They didn't have kids before they had me. Uh, my mom was the first one to have a kid. It brought it to my grandma and my grandpa. So today, 
Wilson Charles Mason as the oldest in the Mason family. So there's a big responsibility with me being the oldest in the family. I really didn't understand that responsibility until what well, till you suffer loss. But I suffered loss back in 2002 with my mom. And um, with that, with that being said, um, you know, I wasn't, I was, I was detained to where I couldn't be there for her, yep. but, but, uh, when I got the call about what, what it was, it was my brother that's behind me and, uh, my brother is six foot four, like 275 pounds was a Marine, uh, with the desert storm. Uh, he, he, he did all that, that stuff. I never, I, I got lucky and didn't get a chance to go to the service. I guess I caught lucky, or maybe I was too worried about going or whatever, but in 74, they draft was no longer. And so, uh, when I got this phone call, my brother, like I just told you how big he was and I'm the oldest. I'm nowhere close to his size, but my brother sounded like he was two inches tall. He sounded so weak on the phone when I talked to him where I was at. Now, I emotionally wise, I'm kind of stuck because like I can't be where I want to be at. Mm -hmm. But when I hear my little brother, which is six foot four, 275 pounds, sound like he's an inch tall because of he's facing what's happening to our mother. And he is representing the family because all the siblings and everybody's there. My first thing to him was, my first thought was when, I, when it came like that, when I heard him, I had to get out of self. I had to get out of what was making me feel the way I was, even though that was my mom there, I had to think about my brother so that he would be able to get through for the family. Mm -hmm. So I told him this on the phone. I repeated every time. I said, Brad, I said, you know, I know what you're going through with mom there. And I said, I want you to know if I could be there, I would be there. And you know this. But there's one thing that you got to know. My mom or our mother was my mom first. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to know I was there. I wanted to be there. I was her first one. And she waited two weeks before she passed away, thinking I was going to be able to come and see her. I never made it. So, and I, the reason I know that she was waiting for me is because my son, Jason Mason was with her when she passed with you. And she had his, she, he, Jason had her hand and she turned and looked at him. And my son never told me this until they came and got me after I was undated. He told me, um, he said, Dad, I, I want to tell you this, but I didn't want to tell you why you was detained because I didn't know how you were going to take it. He says, Grandma B before she passed away, turned and looked at me. And she looked at me and she says, Chuck, I knew you was coming. Ooh. And so I take it you two look alike? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely look like, he definitely looks like your son, huh? Yeah. yeah. And so I said, she did what he says. And then he says, I told her, I said, no, Grandma B, this is Jason. And she says, no, that's Chuck, you're Chuck. I knew you was coming. And she closed her eyes and went, she was gone. So those are things that I I hold fast to me because like I know where I I know what pain and suffering is, what hurt. Uh, nobody feels your pain more than you do. You think they do. You think this everybody says they hurt this, but every individual is an individual. You have your right. own level of pain that you can take and what you won't take. And every situation is me losing, if I, me
me losing my mom and you losing your mom are not going to be the same. No, it's just not at all. our relationships the same yeah. is different. I mean, everything is different. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah you know, like, yeah. Uh, like, like I said, today is August 30th, and I'm the oldest sibling in my family. Uh, three weeks ago, I just buried my cousin, and he is 59. He's 59. And he died of pancreatic cancer, but I, I hurt because of that because he was my first cousin. And you told me you two were very close. We were real close. We were real close. I mean, you know, might as well say, yeah. Uh, but today, I mean, you know, I, I think about him all the time. His phone number is still in my phone. And the number that I call goes to his mom's house, which is I go see his mom every Sunday. That's my aunt. And we talk, and we talk, but uh, I feel for her because she misses her son. Mm -hmm. Now, he was an only child, right? No, he was not. Oh. It, my cousin Henry is my age. He was born in 56, too. I was six. But he's a football coach in Wisconsin. And he didn't make it to the film because of COVID. So he has, he didn't, he, he, they, they talk to their mom every week. He talks to his mom every week. He's married. But he was, Henry was a supreme athlete. Supreme. His dad, my uncle, my uncle played professional baseball for the Philadelphia Phillies uh, in 1960. He played for the Kansas City Monarchs here in Kansas City. He played with Dr. Page. He played with Buck O'Neill. All of them. He was a pitcher. Uh, family has history. And I don't try to live off of their history. I just know what I have. I just know who they are. And I know what and I know that my last name is Mason. Their last name is Mason. We were all athletes, athletic. So, you know, it's just something to hold on to that you can say that you have, that you have, but at the same time, you are responsible for your own your own well being and how you present people and, and what you and what you want to leave. You know, today all the things that I've tried to do within my life, I know that I want to leave something to my children. And that's that's the, that's the uh, the nature of everybody. I think everybody wants to leave something for their kids mm -hmm. somewhere. You know, something. I don't want to. Do, I don't want to leave them somebody that didn't do nothing and that, somebody that was an f up all the time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, uh, which I could have that title. <laughs> I could have had that title, but lo and behold, um, you know, I found Jesus. And I've been knowing I've been knowing God for a long time. Don't get me wrong, I was born and raised in the church. My mom took me to send me to Sunday school every week, put me in a white robe, set up on there and sing in the choir, have no hair, ball headed, go get get hair cut on Saturday and get ready to go to church. I didn't even know what the minister was saying of her, but he was on the pulpit doing this, doing that, doing this, Southern Baptist Church, you know. So I've been I'm quite aware. Of what it is but when you understand what the book says and then you start reciting verses and when you start just praying and you start looking and reading but then compare your life to what you read how it fits it does it does it tells you it tells you i'm very fortunate today i'm i'm being honest with you i'm, I'm lucky i don't i and really truly I refereed basketball in the Big Eight before it was the Big Twelve, and um, Coach Larry Brown was coaching KU, and I was on the floor with Ed Hightower and Eddie Sanchez. That was the last game I refed, and they were playing Colorado, and they had a coach. Colorado had a coach named Coach Pat Harrington, and Ed Hightower was probably the best ref black referee in the country. He refereed so many Final Fours that you couldn't even count them. But I was a rookie on the block. I've been in the big eight for two years as an alternate. So I got this game. Last one. And so like we walked up to we walked up to say good luck to both the coaches. So we walk across, we can go over and say good luck, Coach Harrington, good luck, Coach Harrington, good luck. And so then we walk over to Roy Williams. <laughs> Eddie Eddie says, uh, good luck, Roy. <laughs> good luck, Roy. And he says, Good luck, Ed. No problem. And he shakes his hand. 
And he says, as he said, says, says, good luck, Coach Williams. He says, good luck, Ben. So then he walks over to me because I had worked the JV games. Lots of them. Mark Turgeon was a coach of JV back at that time. And so I walked up to Coach Williams. I says, good luck, Coach Williams. He says, Chuck, what did I tell you about luck? And I says, I remember a whole bunch of stuff you told me. He says, well, what do you think I told you about luck? I said, well, I think sometimes you tell me it ain't about luck. It's about the brakes. And he says, you're absolutely right. It's about the brakes. I thought, I think, I think of that all the time. I got a break when I met Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> I got a break when I met her. I got a break when I met the people at Christian Brothers. Mm -hmm. I got a break when I met their son, which in turn, it's amazing how that happened because when I met their son, we were detained and he knew I had talked to him about my car three weeks before we even went to where, we, where we're at today, where we got, got it done. Mm -hmm. Something in him saw how serious I was about trying to get my stuff together, which and then he told me about his dad. He said, call him. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I called him. You had no idea what I was no coming. I had no idea what was coming. <laughs> what was coming. But um, they, genuine people, genuine people, God bless me with him. His walk, his walk is, everybody's walk is different. I'm telling you. I'm a little further along than he is. Because he hasn't grabbed it yet. He's still dibbing and dabbing out in the world. I love him. Yep. I love him. That's what I heard. Yeah. I love him. And he's he's good. He's a good kid. But at the same time, he has to learn. He's gonna have to learn. And hopefully he stays alive and learns. Learns because like I was just like him. I was hard headed. My mom told me you was hard headed. My mom told me I was a hard headed <laughs> little boy. I'm telling you. So with all that being said, so if you know, I'm blessed today. Uh, I'm, I'm currently, um, I work a job that I don't really, I'm, I'm on social security. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I really don't, but I have to stay busy. I have to stay busy because I don't want my mind to go wandering around and doing crazy stuff. Even though I got, even though I got God on my side, I know who this guy is <laughs> i know i know what he's capable of doing and i don't want to put him in that position to be capable of doing anything so the right thing and you know the enemy is going to try and get you they try that yeah. they come in they'll they'll come instead of coming right here at you they come around oh yeah he's very sneaky yeah, they, uh, he, they, they'll come around they'll go through people Mm -hmm. any way to get you off your square or any way to get at you so that you can just say i can do it well when you say i can't do it and when you say i don't want to do it it's it's like um they, they try harder then they try harder but i i push back i push back I journal every day, regardless of what you see, regardless of what I look like or whatever, I journal every day. I have a journal since, 2000, since 2016, a piece of paper. And the paper that I use, you'll never know what, you'll never guess what it's written on. <laughs> I told somebody this today. Uh, I journal since 2016 on scrap paper. What's ever on the front of it doesn't count. It's what I write on the back of it. I got paper from being detained, <laughs> uh, mail, all kinds of it, but it's all dated. And if I would, if I wanted to go back and look at it and just see the progression of where I came from, where I went, where I went back, how I did this to get back where I was at. You look at it, you look at it and say it's it's ironic that I'm still here. It's ironic, but my kids tell me this. I says, "Dad, you're a cat with nine lives." <laughs> they'll, they'll tell you that. Which life do they say you're on? Eleven, twelve. 
<laughs> 11 or 12, because I just, I mean, I love my children and I want to just, I just want to be the dad that I can be. And then I want to be the grandpa to my five. That's all I really care about. I mean, the, the most important thing to me today in this order, if you, you heard it from me first, God, sobriety, family. That's it. Anything else after that, friends, associates, work, work people like my good friend, my good friend, Teresa, she's right there. She's almost like family. You can almost call her family. Uh, but I got, and my friend, my friend in Ohio, Jonah, and then my, my mentor here, Mike, those three, that's, that's as close to me as I have people. And like I told you, if you die with five, you're lucky. I got three. I got three that I know that would be there for me. If I was to, if I was to pass away today, I know that John Money Break, I know that Mike Van Fleck, I know that Teresa McGarry would be there. That's what I'm telling you. Today's a good day. Today is a real good day. And I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be doing this. And I hope it's I hope it does something for financial fix because I'm trying to give something back. I appreciate that. And hopefully it'll help it'll help somebody else. If you don't think you can do it, you won't. You gotta think you can do it. You gotta think that you can absolutely positively beat the odds. I'm beating it because like I want to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If you if you think you can, then you're gonna behave that way and you're gonna make decisions that help you be successful. If you think you can't, then you're, you're gonna defeated. think that way and you're gonna make decisions and behaviors that end up proving you right. And you know, it's it's mindset has a lot to do yep. with success. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty much I'm on that I'm on that role right now. I'm telling you. Uh, everything I do is positive. I'm going to say this. I don't know where this is going to go or whoever knows whoever hears this, but I'm in an Oxford house right now. I was in an Oxford house for four and a half years before I got into this one. Four and a half years clean sober, no problems, no nothing. President of Chapter 17, which was ran by 15, I ran 15 houses with men and women that had children and the to make wise judgments, to keep them running, keep them up and running. Each one of them had a rent of over $1,500 a month. So we had to make sure that everybody was in compliance to go do their job, pay their rent, so they pay their bills, all that. The responsibility of the president of the chapter was to make sure the houses stay up. I was the president of the house for two years, president of chapter 17 for two years, president of Clover two for three and a half. So, I mean, it's a big step, and and that's for somebody that was coming back from the depths of hell, <laughs> uh, being incarcerated, uh, detained, as I call it. <laughs> but I I, I cut that, yeah. <laughs> you know, but at the same time, it was something that I wanted to do. I didn't have to do it. Well, I'm gonna say this. Yeah, I had to do it because if I didn't do it, I would still be detained. <laughs> So I chose the latter. I chose to use what I could do, <coughs> and it worked out. Uh, I learned. I saw a lot of people, met a lot of different people along the way, helped a lot of different people along the way. Um, but again, again, um, you can never get tired of doing what's right. Just because it, you're doing what's right doesn't give you the right to go out there and say, well, I can party one day and forget it and everything will be okay because it's not going to be okay if you go out there and you screw yourself up because mm -hmm. there's people there's a bunch of people counting on you there's a bunch of people that you've already gave your word that you're going to do this but you can't do this if you're doing something else derogatory to the to the cause so i choose to stay firm on what i'm doing daily i get up every morning at 4 30 it doesn't matter if i go to work or not <laughs> That's every day of the week, 4.30 in the morning. I read, I write. Don't call me at 4.30 in the I'm, morning. Oh, I'm, I'm sleeping. I might call you. I might call you. <laughs> no, I'm, no. I'm a night owl, not a morning person. Well, I'm just saying, I, uh, 
I don't know if it's old age or not. I'm not old though. I'm telling you. I just people people ask me this all the time. They say, Well, how old are you? And I said, I'm 65. They said, Well, how do you feel? I said, Oh no, I never been there. <laughs> I never been there yet. But I can tell you that uh I have I have I think I have a lot to give. I have a lot to offer. If I could just stay on the straight and narrow, which I am. I don't uh, I don't challenge I don't challenge that though by saying I can do something and then challenge because I used to I used to take chances. I don't take chances anymore. I can't take any more chances. I know I might not have any more. <laughs> I might not have any more. You're already out of lives. Yeah. So your my, kids. My kids, hey. <laughs> and my daughter's got me on rations right now. She's got me on rations. I don't want to get to talk to my daughter once a week. When I used to bug her all the time, she said, Daddy, you don't know, you don't have anything to talk about. You just want to bug somebody. So now she talks to me on Tuesdays. And that's our day. Tuesdays are our day. Which I can't wait for Tuesday. I love my daughter. Uh Brittany's great. She's probably the best thing that I ever did besides my two boys. And they're good. Um, but at the same time, they all they live their lives and they do what they do. I'm their dad. Nothing can change that. Nothing can change that. Nothing can change what they what they become, what they do. I'm still their father. So I have to act accordingly. I have to be the I have to be the dad. Mm -hmm. And in order to be the dad, you gotta be there. So my plan today is work hard. Work hard, <laughs> work even harder, <laughs> and work even harder to that to make sure that I am in compliance with my family. And I stay clear, clear upstairs, that means sobriety. But first and foremost, have God in my life on everything because He dictates what I do. Yes, He does. He dictates what I do. He gave me Teresa in my life just because. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but she's funny. She's funny, but she's but she's real. She's a realist. She's a realist. She um, when she found me through Chris, I don't even know how she. I don't even know how she did. Where'd you come from? <laughs> you come? Well, Scott's wife is Tammy. Tammy and I uh, worked together at DST Systems for a long, lot of years. So we That's where I met you. And like, that, that where I met you? No. Mm -hmm. Not DST. No, through them. Through Christian Brothers. Yeah. Yes. So Tammy and I have known each other for like 25 years. She's not my oldest friend. I've got three friends that I've known longer than that. Um, but she's definitely she's up there. one of yeah, definitely up there. She's also one of the directors on the board of on the board of the nonprofit. And um, so when Brandon had you call his dad. And that's what kind of got you into our vehicle assistance arena service. And then that's when Tammy connected you with me because financial coaching and, and some of that other stuff is part of the requirement yeah. to receive yeah, the coach. vehicle assistance. Yeah, coach. I got, you know, I, my coach bench me. <laughs> I said, oh, man, don't bench me. Please don't put me on the bench. Don't put me on the bench. I want to play. Um, yeah, they, I, if you would, if you would have told me that I would have known, if you would have told me that I would have had my car, if you have told me I would have had all the things that I got right now, say three months ago, just say three months ago, I would say you're lying. There's no way I could ever, I wouldn't have been able to recover from what happened to me without the help that I received. And it was on faith. It was on faith. That somebody was going to do what they said they was going to do, and somebody was me. They took, they put a lot of faith in me to do what I said I was going to do, and I haven't wavered. I won't. Correct. I won't, and I you won't. Have not. And I will not. I will not. There's nothing worth more than that to me at all. And I promise you, it's it goes without saying. I'm where I'm at today through the help of this woman, to Tammy. And through Scott, and lo and behold, Brandon. I give Brandon all props because Brandon told me to call his dad, mm -hmm. and I have to thank him. And I haven't talked to him. 
That's God what, works through. God can work through anyone, even somebody who's that, um, yep, he did dipping and dabbling and, yep, and stuff yep, that they did. shouldn't be. But I, I, no doubt about it. No he doubt. still used Brandon for good. He did, and he did look. I mean, I, I try. I would, I would help Brandon if I could help him, but I'm not going to enable him. Yeah, that's hard. It's hard. You see, I had this. I had a problem with my sister just this past week. And she's my only sister. My sister, she had a car accident two, two and a half years ago that almost killed her. And I was at the, I went to the hospital every day. She lost her hands, messed up to where she can't, she can't use it. Uh, but uh, Sissy is, she's resilient, but she has, she has deficiency now. And so with that being said, I kind of look after her when I can, because she's still my sister. She still has entitlement issues. <laughs> she has entitlement <laughs> issues. She thinks it because, but I know when she's playing and when she ain't. And I tell her that all the time. I said, I'm not going to enable you to do anything that's going to keep you down. If you can do something for yourself and to be self-sufficient, kind of responsible then you would need to do that because that's the only way that you're going to understand how to live your life um you told me i do that to you all the time oh you definitely yeah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah i got a good teacher i told you <laughs> i told you that yeah. um i don't know financial fix i i'm trying to be financially fixed <laughs> i'm trying to work hard and you are you're working hard I'm, i work hard every day i do i get up it's it's ironic that the job that i got i love it it's it's been a long time since i could actually say i really like going to work honestly even a lot when, of people can't say that so you're very blessed in that when i say, say that. and they know where i work at i tell them how lucky and how good i feel about going to work i mean I know it's not, it, it really truly is not about how much money you make, what you do with it, what you do with the money you make. I mean, I had a job making almost $16 an hour when I was working 12 hours a day, seven o'clock at night to seven in the morning. At 65 years old, I couldn't do it. And a lot of that was on your feet, which wasn't good for your knees and back. I couldn't do it. So I, I, I couldn't do it. So it's not always about how much money, it, it's not all about that. Well, it's about what you do. It's whether or not what you do you feel makes a difference. It's the culture that you're working in, the people that you're working with, whether or not you have leaders that allow you to, um, that, that respect you and enable you to do the things that you can do, or are they ones that micromanage and constantly put you down and belittle you in front of everybody else? And, they have, you know, there's, and it sounds like you work with some really, really great people yeah, in a they, very good environment and They've been they've been very good to you. They've been real good. They, yeah. yeah, I work around a lot of Hispanics that don't speak English, but the people there they they kind of cater they cater to me, but they know that there's something that they see in, within me that says that hey, this guy knows he knows what he's doing. They, I've only been there for a couple of weeks, and they have referred people to come to me. They asked me to show them certain things, to do this, to do that, to do this. Kind of like put, you, put me in a power position and say, well, you have to do it like this or do it like that. I didn't want that, but they wouldn't have told them to, to come see me unless they knew that I could do it, if I could have done it. Right. And, and they wanted to see if I was going to take the challenge and do, just say, well, I don't know, go ask him. You know, I or were you going to take the time to well, teach? Well, yeah. So mm -hmm. I stepped up and said, okay. This is how I've done it, but this is how you would do it. If if I'm not here, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. And so that what they what the people taught me, I taught somebody else. Now they can teach somebody else. And they can teach somebody else, and then it, it's kind of like dominoes. So really, you know, it's it works, but you got to be teachable. You have to be. Mm -hmm. yep. You have to listen before I take somebody on. For financial coaching, that's one of the things is they've got to be coachable and they've got to be teachable. I'm not coachable. I'm not teachable. 
Yes. Oh, that's what I needed to know. That's what I needed. See, and to I know. didn't hesitate. No, you said it real fast. Too. <laughs> you said it real fast. That's good. I didn't know where I was at with you. I was like, saying, oh, you're you know, so full of it. Well, sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, sometimes. I'm blessed to have. <laughs> really, I don't. I don't know where this is going. Maybe somebody's going to get to see it. But there's been a lot of things that have been said here, and there's probably a lot more that could be said. All I know is that if you have the opportunity to ever talk to this woman or talk to Scott or Christine Tammy. or Tammy, no, I don't know where Christine came from. My I, younger I'm daughter, not, Christina. I'm but, not, who? My younger daughter is Christina. Oh, I'm not, oh that okay. I, come no, from? I, never, I, never, I never met her. I never met her. Maybe so no, you haven't met that one. I am a, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm old. I'm telling you guys, I'm old. I forget names fast. In my job, I don't remember anybody's name. It takes me a long time. This one guy, he says, man, just call me July. Because your birthday's in July. And I said, well, why that? Because my name's Julio. <laughs> and I said, okay. So every time I see him, I call him July. And he says, okay, you know who I am now. So, I mean, it's just that it's, it's whatever like, works, whatever works, whatever works, whatever it is. I mean, people being, being, uh, being a people person, because I think that's what I am. Uh, I've worked in customer service a lot of years. I worked at FedEx. I was a crowd manager and I drove to the Lake of the Ozarks from Kansas City for five years. That's 450 miles round trip, four times a week, four days a week, 10 hours a day. And, uh, when you go to the Lake of the Ozarks, and I'm not prejudiced, I don't, my mom never taught me to see color, none of that, none of my family, none of that, but the Lake of the Ozarks, there's not too many, uh, uh, should I say, black people that live down there at the lake, there wasn't, not at that time when I was going down there, so everybody thought I was crazy for going down there because they said, you know, you don't, I said, I'm just a people. I'm just a person. Man. I treat yeah. people. I, I just treat people how I want to be treated. The golden rule, once again, and mm -hmm. it work. It usually works because I have a good. I had a good rapport with a whole bunch of people. Lots. I brought home fish every week. <laughs> they were fishing. They would bring me fish. They give me this. Give me that. I mean, you know, I I was born and raised in Marshall, Missouri. Marshall's like seventy five miles east of Kansas City. This is 2021. I left Marshall in 2000. No, I left Marshall in 1977. Population sign in Marshall said 12,051. That was 1977. What do you think? The, what do you think the population sign says today? Now I just came from down. There. I just came from down there three weeks ago. 12,051. <laughs> they haven't changed it since then. <laughs> It's crazy. I was like, I, I know there's more people down there, but that's a small town. Uh, I I don't want to keep talking, but I want to say this before I go, because I know we, we got to close this out. Well, we've got about 10 minutes. Okay, and well, minutes. I'm going to say just like this to you. I, uh, I told you all I was a journal, and I journal a lot. As I could, the journal is so much of me ins and outs good times bad times relationships uh jail uh life death uh married kids babies uh grandkids uh just it's it's so it's just like marshall was a, it was a town where I was going to write this book. I'm thinking about it because somebody always asked me this. Says, "Man, you journal so much. Why don't you just write a book?" And I says, "I'm not done yet." <laughs> I said, "I'm not done yet." But they said, "Well, maybe." You, I said, "Yeah." I said, "Maybe," but I said, "These these things in here that I write, uh, it's about daily daily stuff that happens, how I dealt with them, and how I go on." I said, uh, the power that I have to do all that is because God says, this is where you're at. This is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't write all this stuff. 
it seems like it, it's it's repeatedly repeatedly done. But um, the book that I was going to write, I'm giving you guys a first hand first hand. Uh, Are we getting a sneak peek? Yeah, you're about ready to get it. The prologue, and I'm gonna give you the name of it. The name of the book is called Self Afflicted. I came up with that because everything that's happened to me is because of me. I put myself in that position. I suffer the consequences behind my own actions. I cried behind my own actions. I went to jail behind my own actions. I got out because of my own actions. I survived because of my own actions. Now, I'm going to win because of my own actions. It's about time. Yeah, it's about time. It really is. And I think that really, after it's all said and done, if you look at this, if you read it, if if I do get it done, because I'm going to have a, have a lot of help. I don't remember people's names, so don't hold me. I don't mind. I remember you. If you call me. But I'm telling you, uh, if you get a chance, if you ever see a book called Self-Afflicted, and you'll know it's by Wilson Charles Mason, the prologue says, I'm from the middle of, I'm from the middle of uh, Missouri, a town called Marshall, Missouri, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, in Marshall, Kids have big time values with small town, with small, no, small town values with big time dreams. That's me. So what's your big time dreams? Being successful, being successful. Probably I'm give a house I know is one. Yeah, I'm gonna get it. I had it in four, four and a half years, I had it, but I gave it away. I gave it away. I gave all that I worked for away in four and a half years in a period of time that didn't take no time at all because I thought I was doing the right thing. But again, I'm still here. I learned from it. Mm -hmm. I plan on doing it in two years this time. Not four and a half because four and a half years, it took me a long time to learn where I was at four and a half years. I know how to get where I'm at quicker by doing it the right way and not having no baggage by not doing something, by not, by not helping somebody that doesn't have the best interests at heart, but at the same time, choose wisely. Choose wisely, because there are those that don't really care. There really are. There are those that don't give, they don't give a damn about you. You might think, they might think they do, but actions speak louder than words. You have to show me better than you can tell me. Don't tell me about it, be about it. So... That's where I'm at. I hope this is a I open it for somebody. This thing right here, financial fix. You can have what you want, but the only way you're going to get it is you got to work for it. You got to work for it. It ain't going to. It's not going to be given to you. Everything that I've gotten, I'm paying for it. I want. I refuse to let somebody do something for me anymore, because like as long as I got breath in my body and God on my side, I should be able to work and be able to take care of it. And as we speak, I am. I'm self-sufficient, accountable, and responsible. And I got the love of God on my side to help me become and stay that way. As long as I do that, if I would have done what I'm doing today, say, just 10 years ago at 55, I might be sitting where she said that. <laughs> <laughs> With somebody with this behind in the, me in the green chair, in the green chair not saying? the red, not the hot seat, oh. not, the hot, not the hot seat. I'd probably been in the big chair with the big wings, so you can play back. But uh, you know, but uh, I'm I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate, and I and I really I owe a lot to Teresa, um, God, and he uh, he put her he put her he gave he put her in my life for a reason. And it wasn't, it wasn't anything, uh, I don't know how to, put, I don't know how to say this. I don't know how to say this one because this right here might give me trouble. <laughs> it might give me trouble. Okay. <laughs> no. Now you make me nervous. No, okay. it, no, this is, she's, you know. I think I know the, where you're going. Oh my God. <laughs> oh Lordy. Just say it. No, I mean, I, she's, she was, she was, she's a keeper. I'm going to say just like this to you. She's a keeper. If I had my choice today, yeah, 
if I had my choice today, I'd have her in my life for, for real for a long time because like she keeps me straight, but she tells me the truth. And I think that somebody as hard headed as I was needs the truth because that just either you're either going to do it or you're not then. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's where, that's where I'm at. I'm trying to be a doer. I you said, are, you're working very hard. I'm trying, I'm trying. And to you've made a, I, you've made a lot of progress since I met you. And I know you tell me that you, you are so far beyond where you were just even a few months ago, but since I didn't know you then, it's kind of hard for me to see that. So I just take your word for it. Well, there's people that you don't have to worry about what anybody, no, there's people that can tell you, but if you see it for yourself, it's better for you to see it that yeah. way. But you I know? can't, I, it's, it's, how can I see you, you, did, you before could, you, I had you met could, you? Because you could, then I would have met you. Yeah, so, you, you know. You know what I mean? Uh, so you, I just, you, 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 you just have to describe to me and, and well, this, kind of let me know. There's all kinds of stuff that happens, but I'm, I'm fortunate. I like Teresa Manier. I like her a lot because she's real. She's real. She's the most realist female that I've seen. So we just going to kind of hit some highlights on some of the stuff we've done up to get into the Oxford house, the vehicle fix. We did eye appointment and glasses today and um, some different things just to kind of help you get up on your feet so that you can have this job and hold down this job and um, get, 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 get my car. It was never, never my car until recently yes. said, Teresa came through and had the Christian brothers and <laughs> it just came down being right above me being right above me and fixed my car and all that stuff I was amazed Hot groceries yeah, a couple of food, times uh, gas in my car uh, oh yeah and the gas cap <laughs> yeah because <laughs> you yeah, had no gas cap yeah my car is like my car runs like a brand new car now even though it has 200 and, it has 260 no, 243,000 miles on it, and it runs like a brand new car. It looks like it's not a brand new car, but it runs like a brand new car. Well, we want to make sure you don't get stranded. Well, I, so. I know who to call in case something happens. Believe me, but I'm trying, I'm at the point right now, there's nothing, nothing going to happen. I take care of it, put my seatbelt on, I drive to and from work, I don't go anywhere I'm not supposed to go. I go help my sister and I go see my kids. That's all I do. And then, lo and behold, I get to come out here to this nice financial fix interview <laughs> at Teresa McGeary's uh, studio that uh, she abruptly uh, has. And, um, you know, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, you can be here, but you got you to gotta work to get there. And at the same time, I'm telling you just like this, it's all worth it in the long run. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Financial Fix. Hope to see you next week.